welcome to my channel this is captain binoy varagal assistant professor department of english st joseph's college of greek or code this is the second lecture in the series of lectures on dario fo's play accidental death of an anarchist in the previous lecture we looked at the biographical details of dario fo we saw the political and the historic significance of the times in which Dario Fo lived and we also saw how Dario Fo and uh, his family was attacked by the government and the police. We looked at almost all the 80 plus plays and other works of uh, the great uh, uh, dramatist, actor, playwright, comedian, singer theater director, stage designer, songwriter, painter, political campaigner of the Italian extremist left wing and of course the uh, 1997 recipient of the Nobel Prize in Literature that, that is Dario Fo and today we are looking at or rather today's lecture is a lecture specifically on the accidental death of an anarchist in order to understand and enjoy the play, we need to know the very political times in which the play is set, the most important uh, incidents and uh, problems, uh, uh, the, the kind of uh, uh, problems like terrorist problems in Italy during uh, the 1960s and 70s and 19 uh, early 80s okay so when we look at the time in which the play accidental death of uh, an anarchist is set we have to understand the fact that between 1948 and 1960 there were so many problems like uh, there were so many uh, attacks imprisonments a lot of uh, bomb explosions, death and all. So to be very precise, more than 60 Marxist party workers were killed in Italy between 1948 and 1960. 5,000 Marxist party workers were wounded and 60,000 were punished and imprisoned. And uh, other than that, we have to understand uh, the very political parties, the political organizations, which were very powerful uh, during the time of uh, the very incident, that is, of course, the death of an anarchist. The very play is performed to commemorate the death of the anarchist. And now we have to understand who is an anarchist. So we know that an Anarchy. Anarchy is a state of society without government or law. And an anarchist is a person who advocates or believes in anarchy or anarchism. And an anarchist is a person who seeks to overturn by violence all constituted forms and institutions of society and government with no purpose of establishing any other system of order in the place that uh, is in the place of that uh, is uh, destroyed in the place of that destroyed and uh, uh, an anarchist is again these are all different meanings of an anarchist an anarchist is a person who promoted disorder or excites revolt against any established rule law or custom now we will just uh, we have to look at the very uh, times in which the uh, play accidental death of an anarchist is uh, performed written okay so uh, we need to keep in mind the very italy in the 1960s so there were lots of problems in italy so the uh, christian Democratic Party was one of uh, the political parties that was in uh, power, the Christian Democratic Party and uh, the ruling parties, of course, the government is the 
government of the Christian Democratic Party and the opposition is the Italian Communist Party and Dario Fo has some affiliation with the Italian Communist Party and uh, we have of course uh, the other uh, terrorist groups there say for example we have on one side the neo fascists the neo fascists it is of course uh, a, a right wing uh, party which is an organization which is uh, uh, spreading some terror attacks in the country and we have uh, after them of course is the revolutionary marxists so uh, they also follow the terrorist path of the neo fascists and now let us uh, understand the fact that this is of course the play accident death of an anarchist is an example for a political theater it is an example for a farce so also it is an example for a satire and uh, it can also be considered as a protest play and now uh, okay, let us read the slide and uh, understand what's in the slide. A few plays have had such a varied afterlife as accidental death of an anarchist. It has, been, it has been performed all over the world, presented on some stages as an all-purpose protest play, but viewed in other quarters as whimsical knockabout farce. The oddity of the fate of Ford's plays is that it was written in a precise context and represented a response to a specific event in the turbulent Italy of the late 1960s. And now here comes the significance of uh, the 1960s and uh, let us look at uh, the most important uh, incidents that uh, took place in the 1960s, 70s and early 80s. Accidental death of an anarchist, far from being a purely escapist, uproarious farce, it was conceived as a hard-hitting political drama designed to arouse anger over the death in custody of an innocent man in 1969 and uh, over a wider crime against democracy committed by the powers that be in Italy. The official politics of Italy in the 60s were dominated by the Christian Democratic Party and the principal party of government and by the Italian Communist Party. The fact that the alternative party was communist not democrat democratic socialists as elsewhere in Europe arouse alarm in certain quarters and meant that there were sinister covered forces at work inside the country whose aim was either to keep the communists out of government at any price or to topple the democratic government and to introduce some non-democratic possibly totalitarian or fascist style of rule. Italy in those years was shaken by a series of scandals which in their dimensions were without parallel elsewhere. By 1969, there were at least the beginnings of the terrorist groups which would so havoc in the streets of Italy throughout the 70s and early 80s. The problem for the security forces was that they faced a twin threat from the opposing extremists of left and right and the left preaching revolution, the right working to bring about a coup. To a large extent, each fed on a fear perhaps paranoid of the other. The first terrorist attacks occurred in the 60s and some estimates put the number of attacks in 1969 as high as 150. The neo fascists were historically first in the field of terror but the revolutionary Marxists left followed. Several of the early offenses 
as was the case with the massacre in Milan, which sparked off the events described in accident and death of an anarchist were in fact perpetrated by neo-fascists but ascribed to left-wing terror groups in accordance with the logic of the strategy of tension. All over Europe and North America, the 1960s were a time of upheaval, of convulsions, of innovations, of the overturning of established beliefs and practices in politics, in the arts, in morals. If the 60s are now associated with imprecise of joyful anarchic groups like the hippies, with their preaching of flower power, free love and drug taking, there was another strand to street activity in that decade. In the 60s, students took to the streets to protest against the politics pursued by their elders and to demand new courses of action. In the hot autumn of 1969 in Italy, student militants seemed on the point of linking up with striking trade unionists. The contract of the steel workers was due for renegotiation in September and the preceding months were marked by strikes, lockouts and episodes of industrial action which started in the factory but spilled on to the streets. The center of this unrest was the Fiat works in Turin. On 2nd September, Fiat suspended some 25,000 workers who replied on 18th November with a trial of the owners and managers of the car plant. Violence was becoming routine. In the early months of 1969, several bombs exploded in Milan. The more serious going off at the Fiat Pavilion in the Fiera di Milano, leaving 19 people injured. On 9th August, bombs were planted on eight trains, causing injuries to 10 people. In November, during demonstrations in Milan, in the course of a one day general strike, a policeman Antonio Anaruma was killed. President Saragat went on television to denounce the strikers, although no one was ever convicted of the offense and it later appeared likely that he was killed by a police car. Italy in 1969 was a divided, turbulent country with the middle classes and established political parties both on the left and the right, gazing in horror at the developments in culture, industry, in society and in politics they could not control. It was in this context that there occurred the most appalling crime of 1969 and the event which would shape Italian life for decades ahead. And that incident is Piazza Fontana. Piazza Fontana. On 12th December 1969, a bomb went off in the Banca del Agricoltura in Piazza Fontana in the center of Milan. It was at 4.30 on a Friday afternoon and the bank was filled with weekend customers and with farmers and dealers who had been attending the weekly market. The device was packed with high explosives and was designed to cause the maximum injury and loss of life. Sixteen people were killed immediately or died subsequently in hospital, and a ninety received injuries of greater or lesser gravity. There were other explosions in Italy that day. One hour previously, a bag containing explosives was discovered in another bank in Milan. 
but it failed to detonate. Astonishingly or suspiciously, the police blew the bomb up rather than having rendered it harmless by bomb disposal experts. This decision, which came to look increasingly suspicious in the light of subsequent developments, meant that a potentially important piece of evidence which could have led investigators to the manufacturers of the device was destroyed. It was not merely thoughtless incompetence. In Rome, three devices exploded. With suspicious speed, the police and the magistrates felt able to announce that the anarchist circles were responsible for the bomb explosions. Hundreds of anarchists were arrested and imprisoned. One of the first was Giuseppe Pino Pinelli, arrested before the nightfall on the day of the outrage, taken to the police station in Milan subjected to 72 hours of futile interrogation in the office of Inspector Calabresi before falling to his death on the night of 15-16 December 1969. So this is the very background to the play Accidental Death of an Anarchist. Now we have to look at the characters of the play. We have to, of course, go for a scene-by-scene -scene analysis of the play and uh, discussion of uh, the important questions and themes of uh, the play. So, uh, next lecture we will be looking at the characters and I will be giving a detailed analysis of, uh, rather, a, a sketch of uh, the significance of uh, the important characters of the play and uh, right now let us keep in mind the fact that the incident that is the very source of uh, the play accidental death of uh, an anarchist is piazza fontana uh, in in which of course uh, a bomb uh, explosion uh, took place uh, in the campus of uh, banga del agricultura uh, of uh, uh, i mean in in uh, the center of Milan in which um, 16 people were killed and many injured and after this uh, Giuseppe Pino Pinelli uh, an anarchist was arrested and he was interrogated in the police headquarters and uh, on 15th uh, December 1969 uh, his body was found dead on the portico of uh, uh, the uh, police headquarters and uh, of course this is the very incident that uh, uh, is behind the making of the play accident death of an anarchist and Dario Fo in this political theater in this farce in this satire in this protest play is protesting against the government protesting against the police protesting against the corruption of uh, the judiciary the executive and of course uh, the government and he is just reopening the case of uh, the accident death of the anarchist and uh, he's trying to unravel the mystery behind the death of uh, the innocent anarchist Giuseppe Pino Pinali and uh, 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 let us uh, end this lecture next uh, lecture we will look at the characters of uh, the play thank you so much for listening